What's up, bro? Hey, what's going, man? Man, how you feeling, bro? I'm chilling, bro. I'm chilling, bro. It's a Sunday. It's a yeah. Sunday. Yeah, for sure, man. Appreciate you uh, joining me, bro, coming on the podcast. You know, what I'm know man. Appreciate, appreciate you, bro. Appreciate the opportunity. So it's nice to it's nice to just chop it up with someone that's uh, completely new, like a different part of the world. Facts. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Shout out to, to DP for setting it up, man. He told me to man, get you, so. He's a real one. He's a, everyone yeah. who knows him, he's a real one, man. Facts. I got to I got to grow with him for three years, man, at college, so. Yeah, he's, uh, facts. Yeah, he's what's up, man. Okay. Man, how you, um, man, how you and the family holding down during this? Man, we're time? good. Yeah. We're good. I, uh, so I was with the family. I mean, I'm in Germany right now. Okay. So, um, I, uh, I signed out here in, uh, when was it? It was like late August. Like I'll be honest, I didn't know where I was going, I didn't know where I was gonna sign. And then opportunity came up and then my family were like, Hey, like go, like it's not too far. Uh I was like, Okay, cool, no problem. So like my family, funnily enough, my mom, dad and brother all had COVID. So like it was crazy and I was like, Look, I love you all, I can't like I'm not gonna lie. I was like, But I'm like I'm out here right now, like I can't come home. Like Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I gotta stay out here, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But they all good no doubt, right? Yeah, they're all good. Loki, my my dad lost like maybe twenty five pounds. He just yeah, didn't like, eat no food. He just didn't eat any food for like a week, like a whole week. So it was crazy. But um, but yeah, my mom's good. My dad's good. My brother's good. Like they all work at like my dad's a mechanic. My mom works in a school, so my mom had to get like the the shot so she could go to uh, so she go back work. into work and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, but my brother's like a tech geek, so he uh um so like he's working from home like okay i don't know if he's watching this either so if he's on this he'll probably just be laughing right now it's like, it's okay. <laughs> uh like i said i appreciate you for, for taking the time to join me bro um yeah, you know, just, like i said some of these questions bro i'm gonna kind of put you on the spot as far as like basketball wise don't worry about it man. like that um just to start off bro just to give us a quick rundown you know where you from uh, how was it growing up for you and stuff like that so uh where to start to be honest but i'm from a little like a small town in the middle of liverpool and manchester in england a little town called warrington and uh funnily enough like a whole bunch of us like grew up playing together and uh mm -hmm. like we all ended up going to like college in the states and stuff like i think five or six of us signed pro so like from such a small place where basketball wasn't really wasn't really that big like we didn't have no money when it came to funding like we had one place to hoop then we had to travel maybe 60, 70 miles just to get to, like, play against quality players. And um, but I grew up there. I didn't start playing until I was maybe, like, 10 or 11. Um, so I started super late compared to players like Dedry and, you know, yes. like, with him and his, him and his, like, middle school stories, you know, like, with the boxing gloves and stuff. Like, uh, like that's real. But, um, yeah, like, I grew up playing, what was it? I think it was a mix of, like, football and soccer. Um, like track and field, um, like different sports here, and like five or six different sports. And then my brother actually, who's uh, who's like four years older than me, he just started playing basketball. My cousins did and stuff. And then I kind of just like, all right, cool. Like I'm the youngest, like I'm the baby of the family. Yeah. So I just jumped along with it. And then like, you know, when you catch the bug, like you're watching it every day, like you're around it all the time. Like you caught the bug. And then I told my, I used to play rugby. And I told my okay. coach, I'm like, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I can't do this anymore. Like, it's like minus, minus, like, it's like 10 degrees. Like, it's freezing. It's horrible. And my mom's like, you sure you don't want to play basketball? I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to play basketball. I'm going to play basketball instead. Yeah, you want to be, be, you be inside somewhere, bro. You said, exactly, no, I can't be outside. Exactly. Exactly. So, uh, like, as soon as, as soon as I, like, I touched the basketball and I started, like, it was, that was it. It was game over. Like, every other sport went out the window. Weekends were, like, finished, like, going to tournaments, playing with everyone. So, it was nice to, uh, like, it was nice to see a different side of life because rugby yeah. was my life for I don't know how long. Yeah. Um, That's dope. So, you literally play um, every sport. I'm at every sport. Yeah, that's why I'm so <laughs> injured right now. Everyone who really knows me, like, I know Dede just tapped in right now. It's like, he knows yeah. me, like, my injured ass all the time, man. Yeah, he told <laughs> like, me. He was like, man, my guy, he was like, he always – was pushing me to the, you know, saying to the furthest. He was just always wanted mm -hmm. to, you know, you always mm -hmm. want to, you know, be active or do something. You know, he said we just really had, to, we me. had to, man. We had to because, like, we played on, we played on a team where, 
I'll be honest. I don't know if any any of the, if any of these players jump in or out or want get to watch this video. Like shout out to all of them. But like we had a D one transfer, Teron Bowie from from Penn State. He played at Penn State. Played at Hofstra. Like when I say this guy could go, like this guy could go. So we weren't getting any of the ball. I'll be honest. Like we we didn't let's say for two years pretty much we didn't touch the ball. Like, you're playing next to a couple minutes here or there. Like, it was one of them. Like, we, in the summers, we're looking at each other like, how, how are we going to get the ball more? Like, how are we going to produce way more? So, yeah. when it came to, like, my junior, my senior year, and we're pushing each other, we're in the gym every day, working out. We're in the training room next to each other. Like, bro, like, I'm feeling it now. Like, my legs hurt. Like, my feet hurt. So, it was, like, it was one of them where we, it, wasn't, it wasn't a choice. It was just a decision. Like, yeah. you know, are you with it? It's like, yeah, all right, bet. You know, like having to put the girlfriend to the side, you know, Jody, like, I'll be back, you know, like yeah. one of them, like, where are you? And things like that. Like it was like we were on it every day, man. Like before class, after class, before practice, after practice, weekends, Thanksgiving break, uh, like everywhere, man. Yeah. So it was uh no, nah, it was Dede is a real one too, because he didn't realize it in himself. Like, you know, he always spoke about playing pro and stuff and and it was one of them where, like, I actually played pro before I went to college. Um, <laughs> like, I played in Italy for a year, and then I played in London, and then I went to college. I was 21 by the time I went to college. Uh, oh, or like, just turned 21. So you was a lot yeah. older than everybody else. And yeah, like, Day Day was, like, 17, I think it was. <laughs> I just uh, he's 17, and I'm a sophomore as well. So I'm 20, he's 17, like, a <laughs> freshman. Super freshman. But he was like a man-child, though. This dude is huge, but with yeah. just, like, a tiny brain. It was so funny. Because yeah. he's wow. just laughing and joking all the time. Yeah. So by the time I get there, like, I saw life a little bit differently. Um, so us, like, being able to see eye to eye, like, it was, uh, it was a breath of fresh air because I knew, like, he was about it. Like, he was, he was ready. Like, he just said, yeah, young bull. Like, he was. Like, he was ready. Yeah, like he was about it every single day. Like we ran ones next to every day, uh, you know, before or after practice. Yeah, and then you got oh, like the, half the team just going at each other. There's like, and on yeah. a college team, you know, it's like there's like 17 players sometimes. Like, imagine half the team, you got eight, nine players sitting at the side waiting to get their ones in. You know, it's like yeah. 10 minutes between games. So, um, yeah, man, it was the grind was real when we're in college. I'm not even gonna lie. The ground was real. And I'm, I pay for it now, though, in good and bad ways. Like, my ankles are messed up. My knees yeah, are was, my back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, all right, so the first question I always start off with, bro, is for you, who is the GOAT? Is it MJ, is it Kobe, or is it LeBron James? Or is it somebody totally different that you think is a GOAT? I, so for anyone who truly knows me, like, before all of that even comes into it, like, it's about what shoes I wear. So the only thing I wear is Kobe's. Since I was 16 years old, the only thing I, I'm 26 now, the only thing I ever wore is Kobe's. So for me, no matter what, Kobe will always be the GOAT. Like, 100%. He took what MJ did. Like, he took everything MJ did. Added yeah. the three-point shot. Added the tenacity, yeah. Like, MJ was playing in an era where it was completely different. Like, yeah. it was a lot more physical. Yeah, fair. they changed the rules because MJ was dominating so much. Okay, cool, no problem. Yeah. But it's Kobe. Like, Kobe took what MJ did and then, like, revolutionized it and brought it into the 21st century. Like, brought it into today's game that we know, you know, with the fadeaways. Like, yeah. you, didn't hear, you didn't hear people, like, get, you know, scrunching up a piece of paper and, like, Jordan. Nah, it's Kobe. Yeah, yeah. You know, like... So for me, what Kobe did to the game was completely different. You know, he brought out the first ever low cut basketball shoe. Now look at everyone. You look at uh, uh, even Kawhi has, you know, low cut shoes. PG, LeBron even brought out low cut shoes. Like what MJ did with Jordan brand, okay, is one thing. But what Kobe did with Nike is a completely different, you know, other thing. Like you don't see low cut Jordans like Kobe did, you know. Yeah. So for me, it's always going to be, it's always going to be Kobe, MJ, and then what LeBron's doing right now is just incredible. Like, you can't even... So do you LeBron's think LeBron could ever pass Kobe or MJ? So let's say he, <laughs> let's say he passes Kareem on the all-time scoring list. Uh -huh. Let's say LeBron wins maybe one or two more championships. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's enough to help him pass Kobe and MJ? I'll be honest, yeah. Like, because what he can do is just it's incredible. Like he but can not only that, my man pass, is like, shoot, run. He's thirty six, 
and he's got like more dunks now than he has like the past 16 seasons. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that, that alone, like being able to, to witness like LeBron's true greatness right now, like he's, he's incredible. Like, yeah. and, and it's, I, I really feel like it's per era, you have that one player, like in the, in the 80s, MJ, uh, well, like 80s and 90s, MJ. And then obviously the 2000s till when Kobe, maybe his last championship, like 2012 was Kobe. Yeah. And then ever since then on, it's been LeBron. Yeah. In my opinion, you know, anyone can at me. I, I'm not really too first. I can go. I can go back and forth all day. But, yeah, yeah, you know uh, your stuff. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. but but what what LeBron's doing right now is just it's phenomenal. Like he's six eight. He's two sixty five, two seventy. Just yeah. completely cut at thirty six years old. Yeah. Like killing the league. Come on, man. Like yeah, that's different. That's different. But I think maybe with him, a couple more years, if he keeps going the way he's going then, yeah, he's just going to keep going. He's going to get maybe three or four more championships if he just keeps hooping, gets a couple more players around him that, that know what to do, to fill the roles, do what they need to do, and then, like, the rest is history, you know? Okay. Uh, for you, when you were coming up, who was, like, your favorite player then that you were, like, constantly watching film more, watching highlights on and stuff like mm-hmm. that? So, you, people are going to laugh at this because uh, I didn't start playing until I was a little bit older. Mm-hmm. Um I started watching when it was like when Kobe was winning. So when he first won, it, I think it was 2000 and uh, 2006, 2007 is when I really started playing basketball. So I think I think Kobe won that year. I can't remember. Um, but it was, uh, it was the first play was Kobe. But then when I started getting into it properly was when it was Lamar Odom, Powell, Kobe. Funnily enough, one of the <laughs> one of the players I really started watching was Lamar Odom because at that time he was playing. Oh, I'm not the mad seven. at that, bro. He was he was playing the five with Team USA, and I was like, I've never seen this before. Like this yeah. is incredible. So it was I was I was watching players like Lamar Odom because at the time, like I was maybe like six four, six five, but I would play the five too. Yeah. And then it got to a point where my coach was like, Yeah, you're not allowed like more than like one dribble. So I was like, Well, well damn! Like I gotta have a look at players that. I can kind of fit my game around. Lamar Odom, catch it, does nothing. Pass, handoff, pick and roll, play, catch, shoot, nothing, rebound, lay up, run the floor. Like Players yeah. like him, I always used to watch because he wasn't the best, but by no means necessary was he trash. Like, he was, yeah. he was, he he was a true he was definition of a, of a point forward, pretty much. Exa- exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And players respected him. Players like Kobe were like, you know, and like he's a dog. Like He, he could hoop. Yeah. So it was players like him I'd watch when I was growing up. Funnily enough, my, my oldest brother's closest friend played with the Bulls, uh, Luol Deng. Uh, so when I was growing up and, like, watching him, like, the way he played, he played in between. He can play in the post, but he's an amazing defender. You look at some of the, like, the best one-on-one scorers in the league right now, even Carmelo. Like, some of Carmelo's best game winners, Luol was guarding him. Yeah, but especially when like, Sassy hit in uh, New York. I, exactly, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, exactly. I, Melo's my favorite player. So when you said that, I was like, mm-hmm, yeah, well, Melo mm-hmm. hit them two back to back threes and against the yeah, Bulls. Exactly. So from like for me growing up, it was always I'm tall. Okay, I'm slim. Like I was, I'm never gonna be big. Yeah. So I need to find a way to be productive or be consistent in what I can do. Um, and then I eventually grew an outside shot and stuff, and that's what I rely on now. But it was more. Looking at players like Luol, looking at players like um, the Lamar Odoms, even T Mac to an extent, because T Mac yeah. is just cold. Like yeah. he didn't care what anyone thought. Like he's going at you, he's just shooting, hooping, going to the rack, dunking. Like it was, it was different. I never saw basketball like that. When I actually like look back, to, yeah. like the early two thousands and watching him play, um, yeah. but I didn't really go outside of you know those two or three players because like I'm, I'm I couldn't. Like, it wasn't me. Like, yeah. I had to keep my game consistent. Even now, like, my coaches, they don't allow me any more than, like, two, three, four dribbles because they know, like, that's not my game. So I yeah. try and look at players. Now, especially, I look at players like uh, Clay, uh, even Duncan Robinson, um, Kyle Korver to some extent. But I look at players who really, like, have fine-tuned their game to such an extent that, like, this is all I'm going to get paid to do. I don't need to do anything else. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, okay. How'd you break it down like that? Mm-hmm. It's actually kind of smart. Not everybody, you know, of course, everybody want to watch the LeBron James, the Steph Curry's, mm-hmm. the Kyrie's, you know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. for you to actually stick around your game, 
I think that's definitely smart. Mm -hmm. Not everybody thinks that way. Yeah, I'll, I'll be honest. It took me a while. Like, I'll, I'll be I'll be lying if I say I didn't watch, like, the Kyries and stuff. Of course, I would yeah. love a, a handle like Kyrie. I'd love the yeah. explosiveness of a Derrick Rose when he was young. Or, like, to be able to jump, like, Dennis Smith Jr. Like, yeah. all of this stuff. I would love that, but I have to be realistic. You know what I mean? Like, and, and basketball is something I truly love. It's, like, it's my passion. Like, I yeah. caught the bug when I was young, and it was, like, this is what I really want to do. Like, I truly want to do. And I always wanted to just inspire others to follow that path. And if that's what they want to do, like, hey, like, I'm right here with you. But yeah. I want to be an example of realism, like, so yeah. to speak. Like, right. I didn't, I'm not trying to look the size of a, a LeBron. I can't do that. That's just not me. Like, yeah. I, I'm not, I, I got to be true to myself, true to the game, and and just be honest. Yeah. So, um, yeah, man, uh, everyone knows me. I'm an advocate of just being, like, being, like, unapologetically you in everything you do especially yeah. when it comes to something we truly love like basketball because it speaks volume like what you do on the court like that's you you know what i mean yeah okay that's a, that's a good way to put that um for you bro if i was to ask you to give me your top five players in the league right now who would be your top five everybody healthy everybody in their prime who would be your top five right now man i'll, I'll be honest i was talking about this at practice the other day and some people like we have we have so many debates at practice man and it's funny because like some people say it in German, some people say it in English, some people do it mixed here and there. But I respect a lot of the younger generation coming through, like players like Devin Booker, um, and Jason people Tatum. are people, yeah, Jason Tatum, like even Jalen Brown. Like in the debate of the other day, my boy Darion was like, "Hey, you know what? What do you think of uh, who do you think's better, Jason Tatum or Jalen Brown?" And I'm like, "Jason Tatum's nice, but Jalen Brown plays defense." What's going to win you a championship? Who would you rather have in a game seven on your team? Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know. Like, that's a tough question. But they're both yeah. young. They're both super solid. Jalen Brown just had 50 a couple of weeks ago, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. Like, out of nowhere. But then you got Jason Tatum, who's one of the coldest one-on-one -on -one ISO plays in the league. Like, he's up there with the Carmelo, the Paul Georges, the Kawhis, even LeBron. Yeah. yeah. So that's that Kobe. That's that Kobe wearing off on him, man. He exactly. Kobe. Exactly. And he even says that he's like, I watched Kobe when I was young. Like, I, I, you know, I emulate some of the moves he does in my game. And yeah. like, it's nice to see that. Like, Kobe paying, like, a player playing tribute to what Kobe did, regardless whether it's the mindset or the moves or the teams they go to or, I don't know, style or whatever it may be. Like, it's nice to see that throughout young players in the, in the NBA. But top five players, I have to put LeBron in there. LeBron, Kawhi. Um, I'm going to put Devin Booker in there. I don't care what anyone says. I had this debate so many times this year. People are like, nah, Devin Booker's not. I'm like, no, nah, I'm putting Devin Booker in there. I don't care. I'm not mad at uh, that, though. Giannis, Giannis is just on a different level. Uh, like, you, you can't compete with that sort of athleticism. Um, and he's a, he's a proven example of, like, consistent hard work over time. Yeah. Like, non-stop like look at his his uh his rookie year to even his third year in the league was a huge difference and then there till now yeah like there's a reason he's mvp um so definitely giannis and then i'm gonna put dame in there i'm gonna put dame in there yeah, okay there we go people we people go. slept dame, with dame for so long and it makes me so mad i'm like this yeah. dude like his loyal to a team He's hooping. He's like, he's completely destroyed OKC. Like, and I love OKC. I went to school there. Like, spent three whole years there. Like, I love OKC, but he destroyed their whole organization. Got rid of three league MVPs. I mean, you can't disrespect so I, let that. Me, let me ask you this. So, since you like Dame, do you think Dame got snubbed from the All-Star? 100%. 100%. I love Luka. I love Luka. Yeah, Luka didn't deserve that. He did. But, but Dame. Dame is like logo Lillard, bro. Yeah. Like he's he's hooping like him CJ like that that what they have in Portland right now is super tough. They just need, yeah. in my opinion, I think they need a, a better five. They have a better five like a. Uh, they had but a Nurk is out. Job. You know what I'm saying? I think Nurk was a good fit, but he just Nurkic is nice. Nurkic is nice, but if you put him, you know, in a in a in a five on five against a player like Joel Embiid or Nikola Jokic, like what's yeah. What's going to happen? Or even an AD, like, you can't guard AD. Yeah. Offensively and defensively. He's going to block your shot and he's going to 
put you on a post or he would have stepped back three in the corner. Like, yeah. seven footer doing that. Yeah. Like, you, you tell me Nurkic can do that? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I, I feel like you, they need, like, a, like you said, a versatile five. Somebody mm -hmm. like an AD, somebody like a, um, let me see, AD. Somebody like that that can always, because now, now the game is based off everybody shooting threes. Mm -hmm. I don't really see a, yeah, a, a, a permanent big man that's just going to bang down low. Everybody mm -hmm. wants to shoot threes. Mm -hmm. Like Joel Embiid, if he just sticks to mm -hmm. down low, mm -hmm. unstoppable. But yeah, he's yeah, out yeah. to the three point line now. He's doing hey, that. Now. And his, but his his skill set is so nice though. Like it's so yeah. refined. I think like his trainer, like Drew, like did a, is doing an amazing job with him. Yeah, and how right. he's just he's becoming smoother. Like his his whole rhythm when he's in the post, like he just finds it and like he plays on a on his own string, like on his own time. Like it's nice to see that. But it's not often you find players like Joel Embiid right now. I think the only like real big you can think of right now that's doing that is. Yeah. Who used to play for the Heat? What's the big guy? Uh, um, Hassan Whiteside. He's the only okay. other guy I can think of in the league that's like that. Like, he's strictly yeah. in the post. He can't shoot. He's even send him to the foul line, he's trash. Yeah, free throws. Kill him every time. Yeah. Like, it's a shack, like just hack a shack. Yeah, facts. You know I mean? Okay. Um, for you, bro, you can do any, you know, any level you want to do. Mm -hmm. Who is that toughest matchup for you? Like that always that you remember that toughest matchup that you were just like, damn. That I ever played against? You could do ever, you could do most recent, whichever you want to do. I can't I'll be honest, I can't pick one because Okay. When there's been like three major like moments in my life or like phases, so to speak. And okay. they're all as valuable and as uh interesting as each other. Um the first one is when I was young. I, I played on the national team in the UK. Um, so it was like the England national team. And there was always like 15 or 18 of us who could just hoop. But everyone was, everyone, my boy Anthony, but me for sure. <laughs> I played against you twice, bro. <laughs> but like everyone could hoop. But you look at each one of them and it was players that are playing in the ACB in Spain in the first league now, you know, like, take a leap outside of out of the NBA. The ACB is the best league in the world. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, some of those guys were so good at such a young age and they maintained it. So I could never make that roster spot. You know, I'd make the final 14 and never make the final 12. So playing against those guys, there was two or three of them who were super tough. Then when I came to college, Bowie, even Dedrian, because he was so much stronger than me when I, even when I got there and he was 17. Um, and then... You've got, in fact, even another guy, Brendan, like, dude's just got super balanced, got like a 50 inch vert, you know, he's yeah. six four. Like, how do you guard that? Like, you step off him, he'll shoot it. Yeah, you can live with that, but best believe he's going to come at you next time. Yeah. He's going to try to dunk on your head. Yeah. And then push forward four or five years was my year last year. Like, my, one of my closest friends now, like Caleb Bagada, who plays in Israel. Like, he's leading score in Israel right now. Like, arguably the hardest player I've ever had to guard because he can shoot, he can dribble. He's like a solid 215, 220, but yeah. he's like 6'2", 6'3", 6'4". Like, yeah. And he's a professional, like who knows what his body can do. He knows his handle. He knows he can get the flow off. He knows he can shoot on a step back. Like it's, it's, it's hard to guard that, especially like now being 25, 26, it's, it's just tough. Like you, yeah. you know what you're good at, but at the same time, you also know what he's good at. Like, yeah. you have to make his job as difficult as possible. He's, there's, you know, there's a high percentage chance that he's going to make it, but Thanks. you just got to you gotta live with the outcome, knowing yeah. that that's the hardest shot you can make and take, you know? Yeah. Um, okay. But, yeah, it was definitely, I'd say overall, definitely Caleb. Caleb's the hardest player I had to guard. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, not to get too personal or anything, bro, but what's something that you, like, overcame that you're, like, proud of today? Man. Uh, I said not to get too personal or anything, but what's something that you overcame that you're kind of proud of today? Um, thank God I've only ever – I haven't really had that many difficult times, so to speak, when it comes to, like, I don't know, family passing away or yeah. um, something along those lines. Um. Like, I had a, my grandma, she passed away when I was in, in uh, like, I just finished playing college. My senior year, this, that summer, like, my grandma passed away, who was, like, my mom. Um, that was super tough, I'll be honest. Uh, like, she was 
when my mom was like, she used to work in a school. Like as soon as I'd finished school, I'd go to like, my grandma's house, you know, and she was like a mom for me for the most part of like 10 years of my life. Um, and then, you know, she was there every, like, I used to play a sport. I don't know if you know it, but water polo. It's like, yeah. ham, but like, it's in water, it's like super tough. But like my grandma was there yeah. every water polo game, like every basketball game, like she was there, like she was the number one fan. She'd wear the jersey, she'd wear the t-shirt, she'd be screaming at the refs, like going crazy. So yeah, to have to transition from finishing college, like in my senior year to then going into my pro career, you know, like a man down, so to speak, like that was super tough. I'll be honest. Cause I wanted to share like this whole journey of, becoming a pro and like the ins and outs of it and um it would have been super interesting you know to at least be able to talk to her about those things now and like talk about because my my grandfather was a two-time olympian mm -hmm. in water polo with the gb team um so she understands what it takes at a certain professional level like yeah. she was there with him you know so that was always something i i really wanted like i truly like i was it inspired me on a daily basis is knowing that like my grandma's like been there with my grandfather while she's going through the whole thing, you know, like yeah. that, like those sort of memories, those sort of opportunities, they don't come around often, you know? Yeah. Um, I think that was, that was really difficult. Like it probably, probably hit me for like a good two year stretch where like, I, I just didn't have a chance to like mourn it properly and like embrace it and, and allow it to help me, so to speak. And like have a slingshot effect. Uh, I think that was super tough, but, I'd say more when my, the biggest one was when my brother, um, he got injured. Like he mm -hmm. tore his, he played in like a little scrimmage game and tore his whole knee up, like ACL, MCL, PCL, meniscus, just tore the whole thing up. Mm. And like, just like in, in a random play, like he's going baseline, jump stop, knee gone, finished, career done. He was playing pro like in Serbia and then came back and then that was it. Like career finished. So to see that, like, yeah, like I, you, there's no like level of emotion you can like, I don't know how to explain it. Like, it's just, it was so tough at that point. Yeah. Um, like having him, like, cause he was like my mentor. He was my trainer. Like he's my coach. Like even now, like he's tech geek, making good money. He still tells me how to play, you know, yeah. like the first couple games is he's going to win, you know? Yeah. So, but like that, yeah, that was super tough because like he was way better than me. Like he yeah. was a one, he was like a six, five, six, six point guard. He could shoot, he could handle the rock, he could jump, dunk, do the whole thing, but just he never got opportunities like I did. Yeah. Um, and then for him to actually get the opportunity he always wanted and then out of nowhere an injury happened and his career just be like done flat in the water like that, that hurt, uh, that really hurt. So like even now- It's, like, it's crazy, it kind of like, it's like an eye opener for everybody. Like, 100%. You know what I'm saying? When you get that opportunity and you get that blessing, you got to take it for, you know what I'm saying? You got you to gotta go all the way because it can be taken from you in an instant, just like that. Exactly. You know? yeah. And that's why, that's why I don't play with, with injuries now, like, or opportunity, period. Like, a lot of players ask me, like, I got injured twice this year. I had surgery in December and then got injured just before that. Like, all the players, uh, you know, have niggly, you know, problems here and now. I'm like, take your time. Like, don't ever come back too early because if, especially at the pro level, if you're not ready when you say you're good and you come back, they'll get rid of you. Yeah. Like, they just get rid of you. Or you don't do something that they anticipate on happening or, like, you're a commodity that can be replaced. And that's yeah. how it works at a professional level. There's thousands, like, thousands of thousands, hundreds of thousands of players who can just yeah. come in and, and, and take your job and either do it better than you or do it to the same level. Yeah. And that's why now, like, I don't take those opportunities for granted. Like, I have a gym, but I best believe I'll be there every day, you know. Yeah. Um, I just can't, I can't live on that, that side of life where something sat in front of you and, you know, making the most of it. Because I came from nothing. Like, my family, we're not rich. Like, we came from, like, a tough place, you know. So getting anything now is like, it's like, it's like four or five steps upon a ladder. But I'm jumping, I'm going, like, I'm with yeah. it. Yeah. Um... So if you could have five dinner guests, bro, dead or alive, any former rapper, former player, president, family member, whoever you want to have with your dinner to sit and just chop it up, talk about life, whatever, who would be your five dinner guests? Who would be my five? Ah, uh, that's a tough one. Kobe's there for sure. I don't care anyone. So Kobe's oh, yeah. there. Kobe's there. 
Oh, that's a tough one. I heard Day Day's one the other day, but I thought about it for a week and I can't I can't put my finger on five. There's too many. There's too many. Kobe, um I'm gonna put my brothers in one category together. Cause like without one there's not the other, and then without the other there's not that one. Yeah. So okay. My both my brothers for sure. Um I'll be honest, someone like Chadwick Boseman. Chadwick Boseman. Black Panther. Yeah. Black Panther. I like I respected him in everything he did. Uh yeah. And <sighs> I'm s I'll be honest, there's three I'm stuck with. This Malcolm X. Oh, good one. Okay. King, and Nelson Mandela. Those three, I'm stuck between those three. Can't go wrong with either either one. Can't can't really go wrong. Ooh. In fact, I've got three spots left. Kobe, my brothers, and then Nelson Mandela, Martin Luther King, and Michael Max. Okay. And I'm I'll be the sixth. I'll be like the lead. I'll liaise the five. <laughs> okay, bet bet bet. Yeah. Um, for you, bro, what has the game of basketball really taught you that can carry into everyday life? Oh man, basketball, man. For for a lot of people, they don't. In my opinion, they view basketball a lot differently. Um, you good by that? <laughs> man, I don't know what's going on. Somebody alarm going off. <laughs> <laughs> but um, now basketball is. A lot of people say it, and it's super cliche, but it is more than a game. Uh, it's a lifestyle. It's. It's a family, it's a brotherhood, sisterhood, like you, the relationship you develop from people within the sport and then people you meet because of the sport and through that, um, on like the branch off into different segments of society. Um, basketball is way more than what, what you ever anticipated at the beginning. Um, basketball for me has been like a tool. It's been like a mentor. It's been a, it's been a path that you follow and you just receive things on the way. Like it, it's not something you can explain because everyone's journey is so different. You look at a player like Derek Rose, like his journey is completely different. And then now, and again, you know, going through injuries and stuff and then ended up being back in the position he's in now and appreciating and respecting life. And then you can look at someone like Greg Oden. Yeah. Like both had serious injuries, but one ended up recovering from one, one didn't. And then bear in mind that both number one picks. And then you look at even players playing professionally, the, uh, like they're so good and they can go into the league and then they decide, you know, like there's other things outside of basketball for me because of what basketball has done for them, the things they've learned. Look, I look at Luol Deng now and look what he's doing. He's like the president of the Sudanese national team on the federation yeah. back in or South Sudan in his home country. Like I respect that, like that, that yeah. I feel empowered because I get to see people like that really transforming the youth not just uh, a demographic of people but the whole nation yeah like giving people opportunity that's going to save their life he worked on the south side of chicago when he was in in uh in chicago like yeah. he's done so many different things to be able to see that like basketball has given me the opportunity to see things like that because yeah. best believe if I, if I if i didn't play basketball i wouldn't know about these guys yeah so being able to witness that and witness the level of understanding that it takes to get to that point and working with global corporations like UNICEF, being able to partner with Nike and work in Africa, like I'm bringing back to the homeland like that. That's powerful. That's yeah. super powerful that a lot of people don't realize basketball gave the opportunity to do that for. Yeah. So it's nice to be able to, to, to use those things as an example to allow me and myself to be able to aspire to do those sort of things for me. Cause on, on my side, my dad is African. My dad's North African from a country called Algeria, the biggest country in Africa. So, like, me being able to go back there and see my family, like, it's, it's, like, it's, it's tough. I'll be honest. It's tough going back to see them because it's not, it's not like, a, you yeah. know, what you see on the news. Like, it's not war-torn. Like, it's not third-world countries. Like, they have stuff. They just don't have the resources we do. They don't have the, the, the internet we do. They don't have the system that we do. So, basketball for me is a tool which has empowered myself and the people around me in order to become something bigger than yourself. 
Yeah. It's about we're all part of, of one tree. We're all part of doing something different. We're trying to bring people together. Yeah. I, I, even, I use you as an example. Like what you're doing in the community, like that it goes way beyond you. You know, like what you're doing for other people's lives, regardless of how big or small it is, you're inspiring other people in your community and your demographic and exactly where you are. Yeah. Like that's powerful on another level. And yeah. regardless whether you played for five, six, seven years or played college or whatever, like, you have an impact on a basketball society we live in as a community. Yeah. So my respect goes out to people like yourself, people like Luol, when their, tr their in true intention is to just do good for other people. Yeah. You know? it, it definitely teaches you, bro. It's, it's, it's bigger than the game. You know what I'm saying? hundred percent. I think the biggest thing is to, you know what I'm saying, inspire. You know, mm -hmm. inspire other people, mm -hmm. uplift other people. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We're not... We all bleed the same way. We all get dressed the same way. We all exactly, die the same bro. way. We all get married exactly. the same way. We all get mm -hmm. born the same mm -hmm. way. So exactly. like, I just feel like we just put a different statuses due to money. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, think that's, that's, I think that's wrong, that's bro. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I just think that's wrong. And I feel like we're all human. We're all the same people. You just may be on TV a little bit more, more than me. You may have... Mm -hmm a lot more zeros in bank account than I do. Yeah. But we're still all human. I feel like we 100%. all should be trying to uplift each other, you know? So that's, 100%. that's the biggest thing for me, bro, is, mm -hmm. you know, it don't matter what color you are or where you're from, you know, we're all still the same person. Uh, 100%, like, man, 100%. That, and that's something I learned young. Um, like, I thank my parents for that. Like, and, like, my, and my family, to be honest, like, being, like, a lot of people don't, a lot of people who know me, know me because of, like, I have, quote, unquote, a black guy's name. People are like, oh, Jamal, like, we got a new guy coming in. Oh, it's black dude, blah, 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 blah. It happened in college, man. <laughs> Everyone's uh... like, oh, this dude pulling up. Okay, cool, no problem. They come in, they're like, yo, where's Jamal? And I'm like, it's me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, like, man. So, <laughs> they see the whole name and it's crazy. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, but, man. But, like, weird. obviously, my dad being African, I grew up in such a multicultural background that, like, it, able, it, it enabled me to see life on just a different level. Like, a lot of people only see, you know, one or two steps ahead of them. I had to see way more. Like, I got racially abused when I was in, I got attacked so many times when I was in, like, primary school, like, middle school and all that. So even in high school, like, it happens so often because of my name. I was a tall, white guy, black guy's name, Muslim. Oh, now it's a problem. And it's like, really? You don't see past any of that? Like, it, it was tough. So I had to mature from a young age. Yeah. So when it comes to things like being, my dad being from Africa, we got to travel a lot when we were young. You know, other people in my family are darker, lighter, but it was being able to see what it was like there allowed me to embrace my culture so much better. And it, it was incredibly wholesome to see the way my family functioned in Algeria and out of Algeria back in the UK. Um because you, you're able to picture things better together and understand life from very different perspectives, you yeah. know. Facts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's deep, bro. That was, that was a good talk right there. That was a good real. talk. Uh, what's your favorite hoop shoe of all time? Uh, Kobe. Any, actually, not any Kobe. I'll be honest, the Kobe 4, first, the very first low-cut Kobe was the most comfortable shoe I ever played in. So the let four? me ask you this. How many, how many pairs of Kobe's do you have? <laughs> Had or have? <laughs> how many do you have? <laughs> right now, I have, five, I have five in rotation. I have five Kobe. I have all the new He AD. said five in rotation. So how many are not in rotation? <laughs> no, I'll be honest. I had to stop. I had, my parents got mad at me because, obviously, for like eight, nine months of the year, I'm not at home. So my shoes are like stacking up. <laughs> home okay so so they're trying to do have work on the house and they're like there's too many shoes and i'm like i'm sorry like i'll make yeah. sure i like i figure it out but um i think in the past year it's been like 10 10 or 11 okay. maybe 12 um yeah something like but right now there's like four or five in rotation okay. that i just keep but it's uh it's just light i keep it light but I, I don't like things the same i like things a little bit different like every shoe has to be different has to be unique colorway yeah. Like, I like the oranges, the reds, but I also like, like the, the black and white. Shoes, the colorfuls. Yep. Yeah. yeah. You got to be different, man. I'm yeah, different. I'm with you on that. Especially hooping, bro. I feel like you got, your shoes have to be colorful. Like, yeah, you can get all black shoes. You can get mm -hmm. all green shoes, all red shoes. But I think mm -hmm. the colorful ones, you just feel more different about They just stuff. pop. They just yeah. pop. And, like, they, they say, like, look good, feel good, play good. I'm about yeah. that. I'm yeah. always about that. Always yeah. about that. 
Um, what's your favorite basketball movie of all time? Ooh. Man, I'm loyal I'm loyal to Coach Carter. I'll never I'll never My change guy. up. There we go. I'll never change yeah. up. I can never Coach change Carter. up. Okay. Good. Coach Carter inspired everyone in the world. Like, bro, every, I'm not saying. everyone's watched Love of Basketball. Everyone's watched Coach Carter. Yeah. Everyone. And it yeah. never gets old. It never gets old. Like, even my parents have watched it. And yeah. my mom and dad are in the 60s. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like, they know about Timo Cruz. They don't know about Love of Basketball. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah okay. No yeah, you gotta be. I'm gonna I'm I'm watch it today now, bro. You gotta be to watch it. Man, we're gonna work out tomorrow. I might do tonight. I might do yeah, tonight. Right. Okay. <laughs> All right, so these questions here, bro, I want you to look at, look at it as you're the coach of a team. Mm -hmm. I want you to pick, pick one of the two players that you would rather have on your team. Okay. So the first one is would you rather have Bron or KD? Hold on. Disclaimer before we start, before we start, before we start. <laughs> Hold up. <laughs> Hold up. Are these in their prime or right now? Yeah, everybody's in their prime. Everybody's in their prime? Okay, yeah, LeBron. We going Steph or we going Dane? <laughs> Steph, 100% Steph. I'm with Steph. I'm with Steph. We going James Harden or we going Luca? Luca. I don't, I'm not a fan of James Harden's game. I don't like it. Kawhi or Giannis? Kawhi. Brad Beal or Jimmy Butler? Ooh. Ooh, Jimmy. Jimmy. I like Jimmy. I like Brad, but Brad's a scorer. He's a hooper, but, yeah. but, but I, I respect the way Jimmy is because he's, he's multifaceted. He can he do does so many all. different things. Yeah. Uh, we Jimmy. going Jokic or we going Embiid? Man, <laughs> oh, Jokic, Jokic, I gotta go with Jokic. Uh, Dirk or Tim Duncan? I'm in Germany right now, so if I didn't say Dirk, I'd be in trouble. But I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with the big fundamental. I'm sorry, Germany, but I gotta go with the big fundamental. Okay, uh, Steve Nash, or Jason Kidd, Steve Nash, hundred percent. Mello or Paul Pierce? Bro, yeah. I had a, I've had a few people that say Paul Pierce, bro. I had a few people Paul that say Paul Pierce. It Paul shocked Pierce. me, too. I was like, you joking, oh. right? It was like, oh. All due respect to him. All due, he's going to be a Hall of Famer. Right? Give yeah. him the respect. But, but uh, respectably, uh, Carmelo Anthony. We going Westbrook or we going D-Rose? Remember, they both in their prime. Ma'am, Westbrook. I love Westbrook, bro. I love Westbrook. I'll always be a fan of Westbrook. I can never hate the man. Always Westbrook. I love D-Rose is amazing, but I love Westbrook. I think it's different for me because us being from Chicago, we always yeah. like Derrick Rose, you know? That yeah. was like our Michael yeah. Jordan in the, the like, <laughs> for 80s real. and 90s, you know? So. For real, man. Okay. Uh, Devin Booker or Donovan Mitchell? Oh, Devin Booker. Devin. Devin I like Jackson. Donovan Mitchell. The last one, are we going AI or are we going D-Wade? AI. AI. Ooh. Man, D Wade though. D Wade was nice. Man. Oh, Flash Gordon. AI. AI. What he did to the game, he changed the game. He changed the game from a style perspective to having the voice as a player. Yeah. To changing the culture of the NBA. The, the culture, music, flash, yeah. everything. AI, AI, yeah, AI changed. He changed modern day basketball. If it wasn't for him, players like Russ wouldn't be around when it comes to style. Players like even Kyle Kuzma, funnily enough, you know, even though he's as as wet as it gets, like he's a he's a he's a wet leftist man. But yeah, yeah AI man, he was he was real. Okay. Now before games, bro, what what type of music do you bump? Are like you rap? Are you like kind of the chill music? Are you kind of which way do you go with the music? <laughs> to be honest. Um, when I when I first started playing pro, I was all about like, you know, like no baby, like getting into Roddy Rich, getting into the zone, and then I got yeah. to a point when I got injured and I like had to humble myself. 
<laughs> I'll be honest. <laughs> and my brother came and stayed with me for about a month and a half in Germany. And uh, I'll be honest, I stopped listening to music. And I started listening to podcasts, funnily enough. So the Knucklehead podcast yeah. with uh, Coin and Rich, Darius Miles. Yeah. I used to listen to that. So I've been in the layup lines listening to them. Because yeah. so something Tim Grover, who's Kobe's trainer, or yeah. the late Kobe and MJ, everyone, something he said is you want to occupy your mind under pressure. Like, because then you don't think about anything. You allow your, what your innate knowledge that you've, you, you've, you've developed over so long, your muscle memory, that takes over. Yeah. So when I was, yeah, I was about 23, 24, finished college going into my year in Germany. Like, yeah, I already reckon all that. And I just switched up, changed. And then, um, yeah, I've I, I been listening to podcasts. You, um, listen to, you listen to the uh, All the Smoke podcast? Yeah, of course, man. I oh, love oh. Steph. Stack yeah, is Stack is hilarious, bro. Yeah, Stack is so, <laughs> and he keeps it completely hundred. Like, yeah. there's no, there's no room for error. Like, it's, it's, it's unapologetically them, which I respect. Yeah. So, I will, yeah, I listen to those sort of podcasts as well as things like money management or um, religious podcasts, just to free up my mental space so that yeah. when it comes to game time, I'm focused on everything in within that moment in time and staying yeah. present. Um, yeah. I think that was a difficult part for me in college because there's so many distractions. I'm a British guy going into college. Of course, there's going to be distractions. Yeah. I didn't have any form of like real proper focus. So moving into transitioning as a pro, that was the biggest change for me. Yeah. Um, and listening to the podcast so I can just free up mentally so that I can really focus on the task at hand. Yeah. Okay. So now when you do listen to your to your music, mm -hmm. who are you who are you bumping? Like who's some of that that top playlist on your phone? Hmm. I know you but said everyone who knows me, I'm not, the, yeah, I'm not the, I'm not the, I'm not the, I'll be honest, I'm the worst person to put on the speaker. Like, don't put me on it. <laughs> Man, yeah, first win the fire, <laughs> then you go to Luther Vandross, <laughs> there's a little baby. People are like, yo, like, why are you playing love songs but working out? And I'm like, man, I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. Just, hey, I'm the it same way, bro. I might go from <laughs> Lil Dirt to Maroon 5 to, <laughs> you know, Halsey. You, I might go to Kevin Gates and I might go to gospel music I'm, I'm it goes back and forth like tennis man. back and yeah. forth yeah for yeah. real yeah. yeah i don't be i'll be honest when i only when i'm cleaning or something it's not yeah. often i'll just be listening to music i'll be honest like i'm not a big music guy i just yeah. go on apple music and like and type in like essentials and then whatever comes up if we're working out i just click on it and play and i'm not really too fussed or i click on like a radio like it's like supposedly specified for me i just yeah. play that and like it's i just prefer it as background music like yes. it's background noise and I don't really I don't really pay attention to music like that I'll be honest um, yes. but there's a few artists I like I'm like a R&B soul type guy like okay I'm like super chill yeah like super chill like okay. otherwise yeah I can't be getting all like pumped up and hyped up man <laughs> like I feel like I'm 40 already <laughs> okay I got you uh, what was the what's the best piece of advice somebody's ever gave you before um, my brother, I'll be honest, my brother gave me one piece of advice. Um, I don't know if it was from him or he heard it from somewhere, but he's like, what could you do? Like, what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? Like what in your power right now, what would, what would be the first thing you do if you knew you couldn't fail? And I was like, and I just sat there and I thought about it and I was like, I don't even know. Like, how would you answer that sort of question? And it, if anything, it was rhetorical. Like, it wasn't an actual question. It's, it's a thought yeah. that you have to think to yourself. It goes alongside with someone sent me this the other day, a, a good friend of mine, Jason. And he was like, when, when it comes to your life right now, in the life that you live, in your present day, your life changes when you realize you have another life. Yeah. In the, the current present moment, if you, when you realize you need to do things differently and you switch up, your life changes. And I don't know the exact specific quote. Oh, I can't, you can't quote me on it. Oh, I forgot what it was. But the idea is that your life changes when you realize there's more to life. And your whole rhythm switches up. Your direction switches up. You know, go, I look at players that go from playing professionally and they just switch up and they go straight into business. And, and they're running that parallel whilst they're playing or 
as soon as they go out of it and they succeed in it and it's thriving, it's because they they realize, you know, what we do as human beings, what we do as athletes is so much bigger. And if you can run a business alongside with, or you're just working, whatever it may be, your own business as an entrepreneur or anything, as well as hooping, they actually benefit each other. They work together because things like I, I do that. I work with my oldest brother. He has a funeral service. So I do the finances for that. And I'm able yeah. to take the, the, the tiny details in that I have to be so on point with, with him. And I implement them into how I play basketball. Because basketball, you shoot it a little bit to the right, it's going to be off. You shoot it a little yeah. bit to the left, it's off. So I can maneuver those things into a different sport. So these, those two things that, that two good friends of mine said was so important for me at such a young age. I think I was about 14 or 15. My brother said to me when he, came, when he got injured, and he said to me, like, what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? And I, it sat with me for three, four, five years. And then I said to him, you know what? Like, I want to play. I want to play. I really want to play. And he's like, are you sure? And I was like, yeah. And then I ended up playing in, uh, in Italy. I went to one of the best academies in Italy and yeah. then ended up getting a full ride to go to the States. Like, and then ended up playing professionally. Like, it was that decision, like, not a choice. It's always a decision. I'm going to decide to do this. This is what I'm going to do because of this reason and that reason. So yeah. when it got to that point, it was, it was more about, okay, how can I achieve this? How can I maintain this and build on it consistently so that I get to a certain point and I'm, I'm good? Like, I know, what, I know who I am to start with, and then I know what I can provide regardless of what situation I ever find myself yeah. in, whether I'm a, a professional ice hockey player or I end up being a GM of a team or whatever it is, I can take that in the structure that we've built and move it and distribute it into whatever I learn moving forward. You know right. what I mean? that's, that's definitely something to think about because I don't think people actually think about that. I think people just make choices off instinct or mm -hmm. at the mm -hmm. moment. You mm -hmm. know, I feel like you always got to think something out before you do it. You know what I mean? 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything you do can be definitely life-changing for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, definitely. If you didn't decide you wanted to play ball, you wanted to do water polo or you wanted mm -hmm. to do, you know, mm -hmm. the choices you make, you know, Everything impact, like, everything's so impactful, 100%, because you, never, you just never know. The way life works, regardless if you're spiritual or you're a believer or not, like life, you have no idea what it's going to throw at you. You have no yeah. idea. You never, never know what opportunity is going to fall in, in your lap, and you have no idea what, how it's got there or why or where it's going to lead you to. Yeah. Like, the, the, the hardest part is what? Well, the hardest part is being ready and staying yeah. ready. You can definitely stay ready. there, waiting for the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the last question I have for you, bro, is who would you like to see on here to get to tell their story and to, you know, just give some motivation now? Definitely. I think one of my closest boys, Caleb, I mentioned it before, his story, um, to say that it's inspirational is an understatement. Um, what he did and what he's doing currently, man, is, is beyond inspirational, um, to be honest. Like, I, he inspires me on a daily basis. Yeah. Um, he, to say he believes in himself would be disrespectful. To say that he's worked hard to get there would be disrespectful. The level of effort I've seen this man put in, the level of work, the level of consistency I've seen this man implement in his life whilst going through some of the difficult times and we're there for each other together. Like, his story alone would make people believe in themselves so much more and be like, you know what, I can truly do this. Um, yeah. Because his story, man, started in Nigeria and Africa and then ends up now on the big, one of the biggest stages in Europe playing in Israeli's first league whilst leading the league in scoring. Like, yeah. that, that in That's alone tough. in itself, going back and forth, being doubted, having to sign low contracts to then getting money thrown at him. Like that, his story alone is is incredible. Um, so yeah, I'll send you his his uh, his IG and stuff and okay and yeah, Caleb's Caleb is real man. He's real. Okay, but yeah, when you send me his IG, just hit him up for me. Tell him you know if you're looking out, uh, you yep. know, hit him up. Love to have him on here to tell his story. Um, definitely, man. Definitely, my guy, man. I, I appreciate you taking time out, man. No, I appreciate, appreciate you, man. Appreciate real you. Real good talk. You know, shout out to DP for setting it up. Yeah. Day -day, um, man. Yeah, so good luck to you, bro, out there. You know, stay, safe, it, bro. stay healthy, bro. And uh, we'll Definitely. stay in touch, bro. We'll chop it up. 
Definitely, bro. Definitely. Take care and stay safe out there, man. All right, bro. See you. Yep. All right, bro. Take care, man.